I'm Frances Harding and I write fantasy. I have been asked why my uh, fantasy tends to be a little on the quirky side, a little on the weird side, and the short answer is I can't help it. Uh, these are the sort of ideas that my brain naturally generates. Uh, and apparently they're, apparently they're a little odder than standard issue. They, they seem natural to me. There is a part of my head that whenever I've, I've got an idea that would work, but to me it feels a little bit familiar and samey, then, then my brain gets a bit bored and restless. And it starts thinking, yeah, that, that's fine, but wouldn't it be more interesting if we did this? You know, kind of, oh, okay, yes, yes, labyrinthine underground city, that's fine. But, but wouldn't it be more interesting if, if it was sentient and uh, if some of the, the tunnels kind of looped back on each other in ways that, that actually defied the laws of physics and if people didn't have natural expressions and if the only light source was glowing Venus flytraps? Um, as I say, these, these seem like natural leaps for me, but apparently not for everybody. So, yes, I am involuntarily quirky. Unsurprisingly, I also actually really enjoy uh, reading fantasy that's a little bit odd, and I, and I always have enjoyed it. Quirky books, besides, I mean, while, while fantasy all is always a bit unexpected, uh, uh, it's always finding different ways of imagining the world, or the way worlds might be. Some are more so than others, and, and the quirky fantasy tends to be particularly playful. There tends to be a little bit of mischief and humour and subversiveness in there. And I, I kind of like that kind of book. There's a number that I, I particularly enjoyed, even, even when I was quite young. Um, there's a book called The Thirteen Clocks by James Thurber that was read to me and my sister by my father when we were little. And it's kind of a fairy tale, but it's quite a mischievous fairy tale. And even back then, I really liked the way it played with language, you know, using made up words or using ordinary words in strange and interesting ways. So that the hero is threatened with being slit from his guggle to his zatch. And there's also a, a terrible creature who's never seen clearly uh, that is called the Toadle, but it is known that it moves like shadows and like monkeys, and that it, it makes a sound like rabbits screaming and smells of unopened rooms. It is also made of lip, and it gleeps. Another book that I read when I was quite young was Diana Wynne Jones' The Time of the Ghost, and it is a ghost story but one that turns a lot of one's expectations upside down. For one thing, it's from the point of view of the ghost. And the ghost can't remember her life, or her death, or even whether she's really dead. But she seems to have gone back in time about seven years and seems to be haunting these four sisters, and she's fairly sure she's one of them. But she can't remember which one. And she also has a growing suspicion that she needs to actually find some way to communicate with them to stop them doing something very unfortunate. Another um, item in the list would be anything Terry Pratchett ever wrote. A lot of his books uh, are actually lovingly making fun of fantasy tropes. And yet, despite this, the settings he creates are richly varied and bubbling with life. And, he, and they're also extremely funny. They subvert expectations all over the place uh, and are also surprisingly moving and meaningful. So I can't, I can't pick a single book there. I also have to include Alice in Wonderland, uh, though describing it as quirky fantasy pretty much seems like an understatement. Uh, it is God-level quirkiness and it sort of goes through fantasy and out the other side to the point where it's now sort of embedded in our communal imaginations and, and our private dreamscapes. I'd probably also list Philip Reeve's Mortal Engines series. Now those are set in a sort of a post-apocalyptic world, except it's one dominated by municipal Darwinism, which basically means that all settlements towns, cities and villages 
are pursuing each other across the plains on caterpillar tracks and occasionally devouring each other uh, for their resources and population, which they then absorb and make part of themselves. So it's a very eccentric premise, but he makes it work in really in entertaining and inventive ways. Un London by China Mierville is a book that I would very much like to have read when I was 12. Unfortunately, it hadn't been written at that point. And it follows the adventures of, well, initially two girls who find an alternative version of London. One where there are uh, ninja dustbins, bingers, um, frolicking umbrellas, sentient words, terrifying carnivorous giraffes, and worst of all, the smog, which is threatening the whole of un-London. It's richly imaginative and very funny, and best of all, it takes the trope of the chosen one and kicks the stuffing out of it. Well, those are my recommendations. My latest book, Unraveler, is now out. Uh, this is a dark fairy tale adventure mystery featuring man-eating horses, misty, mysterious marsh woods, supernatural spiders, curses, ancient pacts, trauma and recovery, rage and redemption, and a great deal more. Thank you very much for watching.